uh, internet. <clears throat> okay, so let's move on. We use different discourse markers in speaking and writing. In speaking, the following discourse markers are very common. <clears throat> so anyway, like, right, you know, fine, fine as in you agree to something. Not necessarily something is beautiful, but you agree to something. Uh, like if I say you have 10 a.m. to submit your assignment and you say, fine. It doesn't mean that 10 a.m. is beautiful. It simply means you agree to submit your assignment at that time. And now, so I mean, good. Oh, well, as I say, great. Okay, mind you for a start. <clears throat> So these are common discourse markers we use every day, every day in our lives when speaking. In writing, the following discourse markers are common. Firstly, in addition, you can, you can have firstly, secondly, thirdly. Yes, Esther, you are right. But then, nevertheless, that is great. Betty, did you see my, my sound is off? Can you guys hear me good? Betty says my sound is off. Oh, you can hear me say yes in the chat. Oh, yes, Ivy can hear me. Yes, Betty, everybody can hear me. So, Betty, check your microphone. Betty, please check your microphone. Okay, Betty is back. Good, 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 good. All right. Betty, that is your punishment for missing a lot of my classes. Now, in writing, the following discourse markers are common. So you can start firstly, when you are expounding the point, firstly, secondly, thirdly. In addition, moreover, on the other hand, in conclusion, on the one hand, to begin with, in sum or in summary, and I like the exam examples uh, Esther suggested. Nonetheless, nevertheless, these are common discourse markers we use in our everyday writing. My good friends, listen, we are going to practice using these discourse markers when you know how to use them well. Things like, um, um, in the speaking test will reduce significantly, okay? We'll show you how to use these discourse markers to connect ideas or to give you some space to pause a bit and to think. Patricia, thank you, perhaps it's great. Perhaps it's great, okay? So we'll show you those tricks. When you go to the speaking test, You'll not be doing M, M, plenty. You'll not be experiencing those long pauses. The long pauses suggest to the examiner or whoever you're speaking to that you have no idea what you're talking about or you don't know what to say next. Okay. Now, discourse markers that organize what we say. Discourse mar markers that organize what we say. Some discourse markers are used to start and to end conversations. Some are used to start new topics or to change topics. 
So examples of starting a conversation or a talk. A, right, let's get started. We need to get to the suit cases. Sorry, we need to get the suit cases into the car. And B responds, okay, I will do that. Kathy will, Kathy, will you help me? Okay. So, right. Okay. These are discourse markers we use to introduce a topic, especially. Right. Let's start. Okay. Let's start. All right. Now, let's look at an example in the in a radio interview, at the start of a radio interview. Now, we have with us in the studio today, someone you will all know from television. John Rice, welcome to the show. Okay, so this is an example of using now at the start or to signal the beginning of conversation. It helps um, the speaker organize his talk and let it out. Now, there are those we use to end conversation. Look at the conversation between a mother and a daughter, Liz. The mother is A and the daughter is B in a telephone conversation. Mom and Liz. So the mom, well, we will see you Sunday, Liz. And Liz responds, okay, mom, see you then, love. Then the mother responds, no, Liz responds, bye, mom, thanks for calling. Bye, Liz. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, mom. Bye. These are discourse markers we use in ending a conversation. At the end of a meeting, discourse markers we may use at the end of a meeting. Anyway, is that it? Has anyone got any question? I do it all the time at the end of every class. Has anybody got, got a question? No, I think we are done. Right. Fine. Thanks, everyone, for coming. We will circulate the documents tomorrow and make some follow-up calls about the project. Okay. So anyway, right. These are discourse markers we can also use to end a meeting. Okay. So far, are you getting the picture? Do you, are you beginning to understand what this course markers is? If you think you are getting it, type yes in the chat. If you're not getting it, type no, and I'll be happy to go over. Are you guys getting it? NS says yes, Esther says yes. Um, William says what? Let me go back to William. Well, we'll see you Sunday. Is it appropriate in this context? Yes, it is appropriate, William. It is very appropriate. Okay, Esther Senam says, not really. Esther, where are you lost? Esther, Esther Senam, where are you lost? Okay, so Linda says, please take that of mom and Liz again. Okay, let me go back. So mom and Liz. Um, whoa, somebody says no. It's a big no. <laughs> okay. Esther says some what? Okay, probably a couple of. Evelyn Ban says just join. It was raining. Okay, so you. Okay, Esther says please, the one before mom and Liz. Okay, let's go back. This one. Now, for you to understand this one, I have to go one more step back. Otherwise, you will miss it. So here, I introduce a new topic. 
discourse markers that organize what you say. It helps you organize what you say. Like to introduce a topic, to change a conversation's topic, or to change the direction of a, a conversation, or to end a conversation. These are some of the discourse markers we use. So here I started by saying some discourse markers are used to start and to end conversations. Some are used to start new topics or to change topics. So let's look at this example. Person A says, right, let's get started. We need to get the suitcases into the car. Now, when you look at this, when you look at this sentence, the, this, the conversation is about packing suitcases into, car, into a car, probably for a journey. So instead of just shouting, we need to start, we need to get the suitcases into the car. You can start with a discourse marker, right? Let's get started. We need to get the suitcases into the car. And then B, person B responds, okay, I will do that. Kati will help, will you help me? Okay, so here, trying to show you what discourse markers you can use to start a conversation, to start a new topic. Then discourse markers you can use at the start of say a radio interview. Now, now. So we have right, now. Then a conversation with Liz and mom, I think it's about well, ending a telephone conversation. Okay, ending a conversation, a mother A and a daughter B on a telephone. We'll see you on Sunday, Liz. So Liz is the daughter and the mom is the mother. We'll see you on Monday, Liz. Okay, mom, see you then, love. Bye, mom, thanks for calling. Bye, Liz. So here we're looking at the discourse marker used to end the conversation. When I, when I begin, I mean, if I start my next sentence now, bye guys, thanks for coming to this class. I am signaling to you that we are ending the class. We are ending today's conversation. Okay, so the discourse markers are used to signal either we are starting a new conversation, we are changing a new topic, or we are ending a conversation. And this one was at the end of a meeting. Anyway, is that it? Has anyone got any question? No, I think we are done. Right. Fine. Thanks everyone for coming. We'll separate the documents tomorrow and make some follow-up calls about the project. Okay, I believe now everybody is home. So I'm going to test all of you right now with some discourse markers. I'm going to share some sentences with you with some blank spaces with options for you to select your discourse markers. And I need all of you to pay attention. Uh, it's a website I have, it's a website, it's an English website. And instead of sharing the links with you, it's going to be a little bit cumbersome. So you let me share my screen, you'll get what I mean. Okay. I'm sure you all can see my screen. You see discourse markers, linking words, exercise one. Choose the correct discourse markers to complete the sentences below. Probably should increase the font size a bit for those of us whose eyes are not as good as mine. Okay, I think this is much better. So 
Discourse markers, linking words. Exercise one, choose the correct discourse markers to complete the sentences below. One, A, did he look sad? B, no, dash, he was really cheerful. No, dash, he was really cheerful. Now, I'm going to show you some multiple choice. Can you see the multiple choice? As a matter of fact, by the way, obviously, which of these three uh, discourse markers do you think we ought to fix in the blank space here to make the sentence complete? Please type your answers in the chat now. Today, I have 102 students in the class. I want to see 102 answers now. Okay, so far I see 73 answers. There are about 30 plus students who are here to provide answers. Why? Let me see, those who have not provided answers, I'm going to mention your name. If you don't want me to mention your name, please post your answer now. Otherwise I'll call you and you have to explain to me why you have not provided an answer. Uh, somebody has dropped quickly, better. So I have 80 responses. Um, those of you who have typed A, what is the meaning of A? You need to type complete. So if it is as a matter of fact, type it. If it is by the way, type the by the way. If it is obviously type it, I need you to type. In typing, you know the spelling of some of the words. Uh, most of you has a problem with spelling. Okay, and guys, all right. Now, let's go to question two. I will show you the correct answers at the end. Question two, dash, your question about our mobile rate. Dash, your question about our mobile rate. I have attached a document where you can see all our rate plans. Dash, 
your question about our mobile rate. I have attached a document where you can see all our rate plans. What do you think the discourse marker will be? Is it whereas, regarding, as far as, whereas, regarding, as far as, type the correct answers in the chat. Type in full. Okay, so I see a number of you responding. Let's go to question three. Well, I think we can declare the meeting closed. Dash, who is going to have lunch at the canteen today? Let me read it again. Well, I think we can declare the meeting closed. Dash, who is going to have lunch at the canteen today? Which of these discourse markers will you put in the blank space? Is it actually? Is it by the way? Or is it anyway? Actually, by the way, anyway, Type your answers in the chat. Is it actually? Is it by the way? Is it anyway? Okay, let's go to question four. We have a lot of questions to go, so we need to hurry up. Question four, dash, the most qualified candidates always get the best job. Dash, the most qualified candidates always get the best jobs. What do you think we should put in the blank space? Is it basically, is it in fact, is it obviously? Dash, the most qualified candidate always get the best job. Should the blank space be basically, should it be in fact, should it be obviously? Okay, thank you for your responses. Let's go to number five. 
Number five, I will help him dash. He has always been there for me. I will help him dash. He has always been there for me. Obviously, after all, basically, obviously, after all, basically, what do you think the correct discourse marker here should be? Obviously, after all, basically, Okay, let's go to six. The interiors are beautiful and thus they have designed them themselves. The interiors are beautiful and thus they have designed them themselves. What's more, by the way, obviously. What's more, by the way, obviously. What do you think the correct discourse marker should be? Okay, let's go to seven. The north of the country is industrialized and rich. Dash, the south is quite poor with an economic based on agriculture, with an economy based on agriculture. Let me say that again. Let me read that again. The north of the country is industrialized and rich. Dash, the South is quite poor with an economy based on agriculture. What do you think the discourse marker here should be? Should it be on the whole or whereas or furthermore? On the whole, whereas, furthermore. Please type the correct answer. Question seven into the chat. Great, 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 great job. Great job. I love your answers and I love your participation. Very impressive. Thank you so much, guys. Let's go to number eight. Dash, our objective is improve productivity and product quality at the same time. Dash, comma. Our objective is improve productivity and product quality at the same time. Should it be incidentally, obviously, basically, incidentally, 
obviously, basically, you need to do some critical thinking here. Incidentally, obviously, basically. Okay, let's go to question nine. Nine says, dash, comma, we could say that the charity dinner was a success. Dash, comma, we could say that the charity dinner was a success. Should it be all in all? Otherwise, in other words, all in all, otherwise, in other words, this one there is very obvious. <laughs> all in all, otherwise, in other words. Hey, this one, everybody has answered, oh, hey, giddy, 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 pa. Everybody is answering. Mm. That's interesting. Okay. Okay, let's look at the last one, the last exercise. There are many, 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 many more, but the last exercise for today on linking discourse markers. 10, we'd better find a quick solution to this crisis, comma, dash, our customers will start to lose faith in us. We'd better find a quick solution to this crisis, command. Thus, our customers will start to lose faith in us. Should it be, after all, in fact, otherwise, after all, in fact, otherwise. Excellent, the answers are coming thick and fast. Okay, now let's check our answers. Okay, I have not provided any answer. So let's see question one. The correct answer is as a matter of fact. So let's see one, did he look sad? B, no, as a matter of fact, 
he was really cheerful. Okay, as a matter of fact, he was really cheerful. We can use actually, in fact, or as a matter of fact, to introduce information that might be in some way surprising or unexpected. Okay, so all those who got question one correct, clap for yourselves. They have done very well. Now let's go to question two. Question two, dash, dash, your question about a mobile rate. I have, I, I have attached a document where you can see all our rate prices. And the correct answer is regarding. So regarding your question about our rate, our mobile rate, I have attached a document where you can see all our rate plans. So here they say, we can use regarding, as regards, or as far as is concerned to mean in connection to, we use them to introduce a topic. We use them to introduce a topic. Number three, we will, well, I think we can declare that the meeting is closed. Dash, who is going to have lunch at the canteen? And the correct answer is, by the way, by the way, well, I think we can declare that the meeting is closed. By the way, who is going to have lunch at the canteen today? Here they are saying, we can use by the way or incidentally to change the subject, to say something that you have just thought and that doesn't have to be connected to what was being said before. Number four, dash, the most qualified candidates always get the best jobs. Correct answer, obviously. Correct answer, obviously. So here, obviously, the most qualified candidate always get the best jobs. We can use obviously to introduce a fact that is obvious, easy to see or understand. Number five, I will help him dash or my he has always been there for me. Correct answer, after all. We can use after all to introduce an additional point that supports or explains what you have just said. Number six, the interiors are beautiful and dash, comma. They have designed them themselves. They have designed them themselves. So all those who think you, can, you, you cannot use them themselves in a sentence, now you know you can use it. Them themselves. <laughs> okay. The correct answer is what's more? What's more? We use what's more to add something interesting to what we have just said. So the interiors are beautiful and what's more, they have designed them themselves. Number seven, the north of the country is industrialized and rich. Dash, the south is quite poor with an economy based on agriculture. Whereas is the correct answer. Whereas is the correct answer. We use whereas to compare two things, two things. So the north of the country is industrialized and the rich Sorry, the north of the country is industrialized and rich, whereas the south is quite poor with an economy based on agriculture. Number eight, dash, comma, our objective is to improve productivity and product quality at the same time. The correct answer is basically, 
So basically, our objective is to improve, to improve productivity and product quality at the same time. We use basically to introduce the most important point or characteristic of something. So that is eight. Let's go to nine. Nine. Dash, comma, we could say that a charity was a success. Correct answer, all in all, the charity was a success. We use all in all to mean taking into consideration all the parts of the situation. Okay, so all in all, we could say that the charity was a success. Then that was number nine. Okay, then the last one, number 10. We'd better find a quick solution to this crisis. Dash, our customers will start to lose faith in us. So otherwise, our customers will start losing faith in us. We use otherwise after an order or suggestion to see what will happen if that order or suggestion is not followed. Okay, so my good friends, these are about 10 exercises. There are many, 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 many more. Those who love, I can share the link with you and you can do those exercises privately and quietly to improve your use of discourse markets. Great guys. Now, what was your score? Is it zero over 10? <laughs> or 10 over 10? Who got 10 over 10? Nobody got 10 over 10. Oh my God. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, I see. Nine over ten. Most of you got nine over ten. Uh -huh. Seven over ten. Seven, eight over ten. But majority of you, nine over ten. Okay. You can now clap for yourself and chest out. You are getting discourse markers in the bag. Now, so we have looked at generally discourse markers. Now, how do you use this technique in your IELTS speaking test? How is it going to help you? The key to successful communication is to make sure that the person you are speaking to can understand what you are talking about. If you can be easily understood because your speech is coherent, containing natural causes and feelers. This helps to communicate your ideas more easily and to sound more natural. In the IL test, speaking in a fluent and coherent manner is key to communicating your ideas. Okay. Now, let's see, assessing fluency and coherence. When you communicate in an IELTS interview, you are expected to be able to talk about yourself and what you will do, what you do, and to answer questions on a range of topic areas. The ability to respond relevantly to questions and to extend your answers appropriately is assessed by the examiner in all three parts of the interview in the speaking test. Hello guys, those of you who have forgotten the speaking test, the speaking test has three parts. Part one, you sit, I mean, part one, uh, the examiner will engage you in a conversation. Part two, you'll be given a topic to talk about. Part three, 
you will expand on the topic you spoke about in part two. In all three parts, you are expected to talk, you are expected to be able to talk about yourself and what you do and to answer questions on a range of topic areas. The ability to respond relevantly to questions and to extend your answers appropriately is assessed by the examiner in all three parts of the intake. Fluency refers to your ability to keep speaking at a natural speech rate without pausing, repeating, or stopping for extended periods to think of what to say. Let me say that, let me read that part again. Fluency refers to your ability to keep speaking at a natural speech rate without pausing, without repeating, without stopping for extended periods of time mm -hmm. to think of what to say. On the other hand, coherence refers to how you organize and present your thoughts and ideas. Are you able to use appropriate discourse markers and linking phrases? And can you answer questions relevantly? Accessing fluency and coherency. When you speak, you will use pauses naturally. This helps the listener understand you I understand that you are finishing a sentence or starting a new sentence, or just like when you use punctuation in writing. However, if you need longer pauses to think of what to say or to access vocabulary and grammar, this will impact the overall delivery as the listener will lose track of what you are trying to say by learning. Okay. What you, This will impact the overall delivery as the listener will lose track of what you are trying to say by learning some stalling phrases, stalling phrases, stalling phrases, phrases you can use to stall, to think. This will help you with your performances. So we have gone through these course markers used to organize and manage what you are saying using words and phrases to connect ideas and to express how we feel about what we are saying. They are usually used to help you think about what to say next, using feelers correctly to sound natural in your delivery. So let's look at some examples of these source markers. The food I ate last night probably gave me food poisoning. So unfortunately, I've been up all night. Probably. So, unfortunately, the first thing I am going to do is to show you the broken screen. Then I am going to show you how I fixed it. And finally, I am going to teach you how to fix it. So the first one is to show. The second one is to fix. The third one is to teach how to fix. And we use the first thing. Then... Finally, or somebody will say firstly, secondly, and thirdly. These are techniques you would use in communicating well. Without these connecting words or this uh, discourse markers, this sentence would have read, I am going to do, sorry, I'm going to, sorry, Okay, I am, I am going to do is show you the broken screen. I am going to show you how I fixed it. I am going to teach you how to fix it. This, when you speak like this, it's as if you have memorized the thing and you are just pouring. But when you use connecting 
Well, this course markers. The first thing I'm going to do is to show you how the screen, the, is to show you the broken screen. Then I am going to show you how I fix it. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to fix it. Neatly done, nicely done, okay? So the first sentence expressed uncertainty and sadness using hedging language in the form of adverse probably is used as it is not known what made them sick and unfortunately is used to show their attitude and feeling about what happened. Okay. Function of speech. Discourse markers are used to express functions of speech and therefore help organize what is said while signaling the attitude of the speaker. They can also be used as a stalling device, allowing you some time to think of what to say. For example, let me think about that for a minute. <laughs> let me think about that for a minute. <laughs> it is much better to use a phrase like this rather than pausing for seconds or using intrusive fillers like um uh. <laughs> however it is important to learn how to use discourse markers appropriately and not to overuse them so they become noticeable and repetitive like in the example below so when, when you use, when you overuse these course markers, for example, to start with, I really like studying. I really like studying English. Firstly, it is interesting. Secondly, it is challenging. Thirdly, I meet new people. And fourthly, I learn about their cultures. However, I must say that I find it difficult because of four things. Firstly, the grammar. Secondly, the punctuation. Thirdly, da, 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 da. you see how all these are discourse markers perfectly. But when you overuse them, it becomes obvious, repetitive, boring, and most of the time, discouraging. So learning a range of discourse markers that can be used when communicating is a very important step to take if you want to become more fluent. You can also use these markers as stalling techniques, allowing you time to think about what to say. What discourse markers are used, what discourse marker to use and why? Which discourse marker should you use and why should you use it? So we have mentioned earlier what we call the uh, discourse markers express functions of language. So it's important to use the correct discourse marker when you are trying to express a language function. If you did very well on a test, you will not start the sentence with unfortunately, as this is used to express disappointment or sorrow you would use a more positive marker to express your joy, okay? So you need to know the discourse marker and when to use it so that you don't use the wrong discourse marker at the point, at the wrong point. So we have a table, um, okay, so I'm stalling. I have a word document with a table with a discourse marker uh, I'll share with you. I want to share my screen. Briefly, you're going to see my screen with a discourse marker I am referring to. Okay, so there you are. So discourse markers, function. Sequencing, ordering information. When you are going to give out series of information, but you want to sequence them, you want to give them some order. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, like that. 
what discourse markers or linking phrases will you use? So you use things like first, the first thing, first of all, firstly, the next one, to begin with, moving on to the next reason, secondly, thirdly, subsequently, on top of that, later, after these, finally, after this, finally. Okay, so these are common discourse markers you may use when you want to provide information in a certain order, in a certain um, uh, sequence. Now, what discourse, fun, uh, what discourse markers will you use when you are adding information? Another thing that comes to mind also, and besides, additionally, another good example of this is another reason for this. One more thing, okay? When you want to add information, you may use any of these um, discourse markers. Indicating opinion and attitude, unfortunately. However, actually, to be honest, definitely, essentially, frankly, basically, clearly, I am afraid. If you ask me, sadly, thankfully, in fact, seriously, as a matter of fact. Okay. Comparing similarly in the same way, equally, likewise, in a man, in a similar fashion. Uh, here, I hear people say this a lot in a similar function. It is not function, it's fashion in a similar fashion, if I compare it to my country, when you want to show contrast, the opposite. However, although instead of despite, on, on one hand, on the other hand, in the opposite way, in contrast, whereas, then giving examples, a great example of this is, for example, for instance, a personal example is, in other words, a striking example of these, a classic example is, a clear example of this can be seen, such as illustrated by, so these are examples of um, discourse markers. Let's look at the last three. Stalling, when you have been asked a question or you are speaking and then you get a point, you are beginning to lose or you are forgetting what to say. You don't, rem you don't know what to say next, but you don't want the person to know or you don't want it to be so clear that you don't know what to say next. Stalling, let me think about that. That's a difficult question. That's an interesting question. I haven't thought of that before. Well, actually, basically, these are stalling discourse markers. I'm going to give you hundreds of stalling and discourse markers. I would like you to chew baba for the test. It will help you for both the speaking test and your writing test when you are writing the, um, the essays and the letters in the writing test. Result, as a result, because of these, therefore, consequently, so then, and when you are generalizing, generally, broadly speaking, as a rule on the whole, it is often said that in most cases, 
the vast majority of a small minority of. Okay, so these are examples of discourse markers and the function at what point to use them, the right points to use them so that you don't use them wrongly to negatively impact you in the tests. Uh, let me go back to my presentation. I'll be finishing very soon. And then I will open the microphone so that you may ask questions if you have any. Uh, let me see in the chat. Okay, so Kafu says, sir, can we say linking words are same as the cost market? Yes, they are brothers and sisters. Uh, Shelly says, please, sir, put the table on the page for us. Yes, madam, that's a good suggestion. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, I am not stalling. I don't know what to say next. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. We are here on the right place. Okay, so use discourse markers when speaking. I have shown you the table. The table lists a number of functions that are used when you need to express your ideas when speaking to someone. It's also, it also includes phrases that can help when you can't think of what to say. Using these discourse markers instead of meaningless feelers, eh, um, or long pauses, we show that you can speak fluently in a natural way. The use of discourse markers when communicating helps to make you sound more fluent, helps you to engage the listener, and helps to successfully communicate how you feel about the conversation. Successful communication will help to improve your English proficiency level and to perform at your best on the test day. Anna says, I would like you to send us the link so we can practice more by ourselves. I will gladly do that. Okay. All right. Now let me unmute your microphone and see if you have any questions, any comment, any concern. I have hereby unmuted your microphone. Do you have any question, any comment, any concern? Hello, Tay. Yes. Uh, right. This is Francis Kabanka. Please say. Um, Francis. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Francis, uh, it's very really educative. Yes, say. You see, when I call your name, I'm signaling that I want to tell you something. So wait and hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, say. Yes, say. Yes, say. Francis, the use of please and say. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh huh. Please and say, please is the same as say. So please, okay. I use both. You are being more. Okay. Capable. Okay. Thank now, you, sir. You're welcome. Now start and ask your question. Okay, say. Yes. Um. I, yes, I'm actually grateful for this opportunity. It's really informative and educative. Um, however, I just wanted to ask if this, you said you put it on the page for us, the link as well as the table. Yes. So we thank you. But then I want to ask if we have taken out the Saturday's morning, the classes days. Oh, it's becoming obvious that we are missing Saturday mornings, eh? Yes, it's becoming obvious. It's because a group of women contact me and, contacted me and said, Sir, Saturday morning, we cook, we wash, we clean. Oh, okay. But it will see how the cover it up. Okay. <laughs> and, and actually, I asked the back door. I wanted to know the first, the date you write the first season, but you said you don't know yet. <laughs> No, it's been good time. We'll tell you. Okay, but say thank you. You're most welcome. <laughs> Some people are laughing because I've said the truth. 
and most of our women Saturday mornings is their busy morning. So, hmm. all right. Do we have any other question? Any comment? Any question, please? Okay. Now. Hello, sir. Yes, madam. Please, um, I wanted to ask, doing that the reading test, <clears throat> is it uh, printed or on the computer? Your line is a bit cracking. Uh, did, uh, I, I didn't get the question. Can somebody repeat her question for me, please? He's asking whether the exam has to be right or not. Is it going to be on computer based or written uh, written based? Thank oh. you. Oh, Evelyn, you must be the only stranger in Jerusalem. It is paper based, paper based. So it's pen and paper, old fashioned uh, pen and paper. It will not be computer based. <laughs> We are very hesitant to ask for a computer-based test. Although computer-based, if you know your way around, is the easiest, it's easy to pass. And as soon as you finish, you get the results. Uh, or even mo not more than five days, you get the results. Whereas the paper-based takes maybe three weeks for you to get the results. But having engaged most of you, hey, me pamuchao, computer is a big problem here. <laughs> <laughs> on that, I can imagine on that day and the pressure. Hey, even the small exams you come to take in our office, the, the laptop in it to me, both of you know who be there. Scroll down, you scroll up or cry. So old fashioned paper based tests will do very fine. For all of us. Okay. Sir, please, I have a question. Never say sir, please again. Okay, sir, I have a question. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I want to know if these are all the discourse matters. And then the second one is with the first question where we use as a matter of fact uh, for the answer. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you can say on the contrary. Okay. Now, you cannot say on the contrary because on the contrary is signaling that you are going to give a contrary information. Uh, yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. No, I think you are right. I think you are right. For that question, yes, if that I remember question. that, Yes, the question one. If I remember the question one, let me see if I can go back to that question. I will come back to this page. Eh? If I forget, please, guys, remind me. We call it IELT progress check. IELT progress check. We want to start checking your progress. I'll give you some information on it. But let me go to who asked the brilliant question. Let's see. Give me a second. Let me find the question one if I have not closed. Okay, there we are. All right, one second. Let me share my screen. Okay, so let's see. There you are. So question one says, can you see my screen, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so question one says, A, did he look sad? B, no, dash, he was really cheerful. I think we can use to the contrary here because here, the situation we are describing is sadness, but we are introducing the opposite of it. So to the contrary would be a perfect discourse marker to use here too. Thank you for pointing that out to me. Now, to your earlier question, is that all the discourse markers? Oh, my dear, no, 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 no. We are barely scratching the surface of it. 
and then the technique of using it well. We're going to uh, delve a bit deeper into it so that you would use it um, and become conversant with it. Thank you for those two great questions. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Hey, Katrina Siabra says, sir, I can't hear anything. Oh, my God. Do we have any other question, please? Any yes. more? Yes. So please. <laughs> I think the, if I take the reading test that you begin. Time, to correct ask. yourself, Madam. Take your time. Correct yourself before you go. I said, say. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> please, sir, you are used to that too. The police say no. It's that nobody has corrected that before. So please stop say, you are used to that. Stop <laughs> using it. <laughs> okay. Say. Yes. My my question is, when I was going through the reading, the reading assignments uh, you gave us, uh -huh. when I do your own, I get almost like half the mark. But I went and saw some question that is very difficult. You will not even see the question. Like when you read the passage, you don't get the question. Really? Uh, is it going to be like this? Because the, what I, the question I saw, if they give it to me, me I don't think I'll even be able to score anything no. Oh, hey, madam, I have always warned you, we have millions of IELTS materials out there. I am only teaching you the official British Council IELTS material. Case close. Okay, Esther Ancras is say, it say, it say, is. The the ganalizing s hey this word here <laughs> this is ganalizing <laughs> and, and is inculcating American lifestyles in us <laughs> okay all right I want to introduce you to a beautiful application the British Council have developed in fact it's been here for ages but most people do not use it or are not aware of it. I want to introduce you to it. It is called IELT Progress Test, uh, Progress Check. IELT Progress Check. This application is a wonderful tool you can use. If you come here, it is developed by the British Council, IDP and Cambridge, Cambridge University. The, original owners of IELTS. Now, <clears throat> how can you be sure that when you go and take the IELTS test, you will get the required band score? Like my lady who just spoke, she had gone to read some material that had put the fear of the Lord in her. How can we ensure that when we register you, you go and take that test and pass in one sitting? The, I, the British Council has an answer for that. And the answer is IL progress check. It comes, at a bit, it comes with a bit of cost. I am only telling you about it. It is not compulsory. If you have money, please spend it here. So here you have all the, they have it for the, all the IL tests, but I've carefully selected the general tests. You have one on-time test, $50. Take the test, all the tests. When you finish, it will give you your band score. Okay? And that will inform you of your, as what you say in Ghana, your smoothness level. Whether you are really, really, really ready 
you take the IELTS and pass, or if you should take the IELTS now, you will fail, or you will not get the right band score. Okay, it's called IELTS progress check. So I'm reading IELTS general uh, training test. You can choose to purchase an on time or timed test. On time means there will be no time limit. You're going to take your own time to do the test and finish. Then the time test will be exactly the test you take on the test day. But this will be on computer, not a paper-based test. Now, each test number below represents the same test. For example, practice, practice test one on time is the same as practice test one time. Purchasing two or more of the same test numbers means you will get to practice the same test multiple times. If you want to practice two different tests, then choose two different test numbers. Example, practice test one, practice test two. For schools and institutions, please contact us to inquire about special pricing for bulk purchases. We are currently working on some arrangement uh, with the British Council to see if we can get a bulk purchase so that we can share them with you. Uh, we see if we can absorb that cost. Otherwise, some, some of us will start fainting. So, but on your own, in your quiet time, am I ready to take the IELTS and pass? This is a powerful tool to indicate your own readiness in your own private way. Anna, you are welcome. So think about it. Ponder over it. We're also working with the British Council to get a bulk purchase. When that comes, we'll let you know. On that note, thank you very much for coming today. Grateful for your time. Hey, one more question. Please. I want to clarify something. Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, on the website, the um, house ready, the mock that you are doing, sometimes the answers that we get, personally, I don't know whether it happens to most of us, but the answers that we get, if probably is about time, and the time is 10.30, the Satan, if you, if you bring a column, if you bring a column as your answer, hold on, hold on. you I'm might get it through. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Rosalind, can you please mute your microphone? Somebody is speaking in the background is distracting us. Thank you. Francis, go on. I said, so I was still on the, <clears throat> the answers to the out ready, the mock that you did practice, the mock practice. Mm -hmm. when, when the answer is about time, like you give the answer as, for example, 10, 30, then you choose to write a 10, a colon, the spacing. You write 10, then you bring a colon, then you bring your 30. You might get it wrong, but then the answer they will provide, they will bring the 10.30. So that is becoming a challenge because sometimes you might write, particularly the word, like something like top soil, then you space it. But the answers might be together, like it might be a one word together. But if you write the top soil, you get it. So that is giving us most of the mark like lower than expected. You got the answers right, so by the dots and the spacing and then. Francesca, thank you for that question. In fact, it is the reason why we want paper-based tests. Computer-based tests, that is how the computer has been programmed to mark your test. So 8.30 a.m., if you write it 8 colon 30 a.m., your computer will mark it down. The British write it 8.30 a.m. So the answers will be programmed in the British way. So there are those little, 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 little things that can really push your score down. That is why we have decided do a paper-based test. The paper-based test, a computer will mark it all right, but human beings must feed it before. And there is some... Uh, improvement there than when it is purely computer-based test. Then we will really need to teach you computers and how to really answer them in a computer environment. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Okay. 
Guys, thank you. Have a good evening. Uh, Rosalind, I saw, I saw yes. your hand up. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, so please, my question is about the, um, the uh, reading test, uh, listening. Sometimes they give us a map. With the map, the problem I have is following what they are saying and tracing it to the map. Is there any trick that we can use to do that one? All right. Um, yes, there are some tricks for the reading test, the map. Um, and you can be sure there will be a map question in your reading test. So we'll probably need to do a couple more um, exercises. I'm trying to see if I can find the reading test, the assignment. The assignment I gave you, uh, whose deadline was 10 a.m. today. But as I'm talking to you now, it is now people are turning in their assignments. Um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Okay, first of all, there was a technical challenge. Uh, the assignment were given uh, with my laptop. But you, most of you used your cell phone to open it. And the formatting on the laptop changed when you open it on the phone. And a number of you saw the questions as three questions instead of five questions. In the next reading class, we'll discuss that. It is one more reason why we have opted for paper-based tests for you. Otherwise, on the Thursday, there will be clumsy problems there. So Rosalind, would, I'm going to uh, compile those map questions, diagram questions, uh, graph questions, and then we'll practice a lot more so that you can become conversant with them. Okay. Okay, sir. Oh, Thank Beta, you. Beta, you are the last person to ask a question today so that I can close quickly, Beta. Is Beta there? All right, Beta seems not to be there. Good evening, guys, and goodbye to you all. Okay. Bye-bye.